got a fun game for us today. And while we're going to reach a very fun position where we're going to be throwing stuff, uh, I would urge you guys to keep in mind that this is a game where precision is of the absolute utmost importance, and uh, and that if you don't, if you put calculate stuff incorrectly, you're going to have a bad day. Uh, and so really make sure to stay focused. It's not a race to who will send me the first moves. It's a race to see who will send me the first moves correctly. And if you move too fast, we're not going to, um, you're probably not going to play very well. So let's, um, uh, so let's take a look. This was a game I played with Georgi Kachishvili. At uh, Philadelphia Open 2012, uh, it started off pretty quiet. He played this not wildly challenging setup in this King's Indian sort of thing, but I didn't play it wildly well either. Um, looking back, for example, I already think that this whole knight a5, bishop e6 was a little bit artificial, uh, but for example here, just rook ac8 just strikes me as a completely stupid and useless move that I, I don't know why I played it. Um, but there followed bishop two. Anyhow, here after queen c7, bishop d3. All right, so maybe we can know if we're able to make pulls or not. I guess Greg is not here, so we can't. Uh, but well, we have white has a pretty obvious uh, idea here. Who wants to pull the trigger on it and who doesn't? So Brian wants to pull the trigger. I mean, there's no direct. I do. I mean, it's obvious bishop g6 is the move I'm asking you about, and I promise you, you will not be able to calculate it to completion. At some point, this is just an intuitive decision. This is not the, the hard stuff yet. Um, I'm just more interested in seeing who believes intuitively that we should be pulling the trigger here on bishop g6. All right. So it seems like most people want to do it. Fine. So bishop g6 comes. Um, I guess some people wanted to, some people didn't. We don't have polling capability, but that's okay. Uh, the fun stuff uh, is obviously just beginning. So there follows fg6, queen g6, knight f8 is only move. Um, if bishop f7, this one is pretty clear, but what does white do? What's the easiest win? Yeah, everyone sees this. Just queen takes f7 is easy. I think the computer said bishop g3 is even stronger, but whenever you've sacrificed material for an attack, the first thing you should always consider is how much material have I sacrificed? And here the answer is you have sacrificed a piece for two pawns. Now you're down a queen for two pawns, but when you play e6 and get the queen back, now you're down a piece for two pawns again. And then finally, when we keep track of material at the end of all this, you end up with a very clean extra pawn and black structures and tatters. So this is absolutely winning for white. Queen g3 is the computer gives is quite sufficient as well. Uh, but there follows knight f8, queen g3. Uh, black has to play king h7, just king h8 was maybe possible, but let's stick with king h7 for the purposes of this game with the point of stopping bishop h6. And it's now knight e4 comes. And this, I think, is the major first critical moment where I want you guys to think. So uh, imagine the... So here, what's the only thing that Black should be trying to do to save his king? There's one maneuver he should be seriously considering to try to get his king safe. What would that be? Alexander Rutten, queen d7, queen e8, queen g6. That is correct. Guys, remember, put an exclamation mark if you want me to call on you. Um, knight g6 is not going to work very well because of knight g5. But... Um, yeah, so Raji is just saying the same thing, but I've already said it. This is not particularly hard. We want to play queen d7, queen e8, and queen g6. But what is going to happen if we play queen d7? Is white going to keep attacking us, or is he going to do something else? Uh, Greg is here, but he can't hear us. Let's go say bad things about him. Yeah, so Havish sees it, um, and Raji as well. Nobody is saying that, um, but remember guys, put an exclamation mark after your answer if you want to get called on. This first bit is not too hard. After queen d7, what's going to happen? Araji, I don't think that's right. Um, all right, Alexander, you want to share with us? It's not rocket science, but yeah, okay. So Alexander Wang has already said it to everybody, but well, the first move at least is right. Anyhow, this is not too hard. I think we can just go. 
In the event of queen b7, at this point, it's clear this queen is coming around. Uh, queen's coming to g6, and uh, and then black will survive, plain and simple. But the problem is this comes at the cost of the c5 pawn and potentially the b7 pawn as well. So this will cost you some pawns. So this is where calculation comes into play. We know that we want to play queen d7 and bring the queen around to g6. But the question is, do we believe we have enough time to first bolster this pawn with b6 and then bring the queen around? It seems greedy, but at the same time, you are up a piece. And if you get queen d7 is giving back a lot of your material advantage to the point that you no longer have a material advantage. So uh, the, the here, what you have to evaluate is, can I get away with playing b6? Uh, and if so, yeah, I mean, we'll have to have a lot of variations behind it. Um, if And I think the way you should think about this is after knight takes, after queen d7, knight takes c5, I think it's obviously not a wildly clear position, and it feels like both sides should have their chances, and I don't think you really need to evaluate much more than that, right? I mean, I, it seems like your king will survive, but, you know, pawns get taken, it's nobody is really falling apart anytime soon and it just seems like it's there's going to be a lot of games to be played and both sides have chances i don't think there's too much more to consider than that but if you can play b6 and bolster this pawn on c5 and then bring the queen around to g6 you're just going to win with your extra piece however if you play b6 and you're and it turns out white can strike and hit you before you're ready that's obviously bad news so what i'd like everyone to do is take some time this is a really tough decision are we going to take the time to play b6 here, or are we going to immediately run with the queen away? It's not an easy choice. I got it wrong in the game, and I was whatever, what, what rating was I, like 2580 something? So. A good way of thinking about it is just, um, if you want to give an answer, say, I think b6 because there's no win for white, or... If you believe white has something, you say, I think we have to play queen d7, b6 loses because x, y, z. So you should make up your mind about whether, about b6. Yeah, Austin, I won the game. I was playing with Kachishvili. He's a great chess player, but he's not a computer. I mean, just because I made the wrong move here doesn't mean I'm automatically going to lose. It's really kind of obnoxious that we can't take a pull here. I'd kind of like to. I'll let you guys think of it because this is not an easy decision. Alexander, does that strike you as sufficient calculation to have evaluated correctly what's going on, or do you want to think more? So, Havish, again, does that. Do you guys think this is going to be a one move long variation, or like a one or two move long variation? There's real calculation to be done here. It's a hard decision. I am challenging you guys today. So, it's the goal. Thank you. I have to ask Kostya to do the poll. Kostya, can you make a poll, or is that not possible? Only Greg has that possibility, and he can't hear us. But I can, I can uh, write to him. That's easy enough. Um, but he's not in the chat anymore. I will. Okay. Well. All right. Well, just. I mean, it looks like nobody has seriously given me an answer yet. Anyway, so it's good because. Yes, Brian. We're evaluating whether we believe we can get away with B six. If we have enough time to do that, or if we have to get our queen back around to g6, even at the cost of two pawns. Yeah, Brian, that's that's how the game went, but uh, you have to, um, but that doesn't mean it was well played. All right, so it looks like Daniel wants, thinks we can get away with b6. Arnov does not. Austin thinks we can. So now it's good. People are starting to give like actual lines and it looks like we're getting a fair amount of disagreement uh, as to whether B6 can be played or not. Um, but of course you should be thinking about this from White's point of view. Like what would White's next move be? So Radia says, no, we can't do it. Let's give everyone else a little more time. See if somebody can... So a lot of people are saying are thinking that after b6, knight f6 is the most critical move. I don't think this is right. Most people have given me that after b6, knight f6, black can play e takes f6. So like, let's say b6, knight f6, take, take, queen f7. And I think here black is getting away. 
the reason that Black's King is uh, coming under some pressure in this game is that his e7 pawn is blocking all of his pieces from getting back to the defense. And once this pawn is exchanged, so, um, sorry, say following knight f6, take, take, queen f7, like so, now that the seventh rank is cleared, Black's rooks and queen can easily join the defense, and I think he will survive. So the real point is that knight f6 is not white's critical move after b6. So... What would White's critical move there be? We have to think about that and whether we can get away with b6 or not. Knight f6 is not great. Vish says rook a d1. That is not stupid, but also I think not best. Figure out what White's critical move is. Remember, White's down a piece. He doesn't have time to mess around. He's got to be pretty violent. Okay. So this is the first step you guys have to figure out. Is after b6, what is White's critical move? Um... So Daniel has an interesting variation that he wants to share with us. Daniel, you want to share this line? All right, so let me call on you. And this line is not best, I don't think, but it definitely is the most interesting thing I've seen yet. So let me find Daniel. Uh, sorry, so ask to unmute. There you go. Yeah, definitely confusing position, but I think b6, maybe bishop h6 is more direct, not allowing black any time to come back and after bishop takes h6 knight fg5 um and after takes takes king h6 queen h4 why is black taking this knight uh king h8 queen h4 king g7 hmm. the problem i think with taking the knight is also that it will allow white's rook to lift much more easily and this bishop we can hope to play king h8 hide with the bishop on g7 and tuck the king away on g8 so i really dislike taking the knight here so after king h8 queen h4 king g7 if you take on e6 then play queen g4 or no and then i guess if i play this one queen f5 yeah. and well let's say we get something like this i think now the queens are coming off the board and you're not going to make me you do have a lot of pawns i don't necessarily think what's worse here but i don't think this is something black should be terrified of i see right um ashish is suggesting queen e5 instead but then i thought it would be very dangerous after queen g4 um yeah so if queen e5 here i think queen g4 and knight g3 is coming and this looks very scary but queen d7 would force the queens off and we get this end game and my suspicion is actually black's probably a little bit better here i don't know guys what's the computer gonna say anybody want to guess brian says zero 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 austin minus 0 0.5 i think it's actually gonna be like minus 0.8 let's see really that much i mean i thought black would be better but i didn't think it would be like completely winning i don't know um i guess hard to evaluate this stuff but yeah i think that out of steam of course white could improve upon this line then realizing that he's in trouble he can play queen g4 check and now i think it's a draw uh i mean at some point yeah, like king f7, queen back to f5 and draw, but that leaves us a little bit unsatisfied. Um, but it is a line to see that, for example, here, white already has a draw if he wants it. Uh, so that's already a sign to think that if we don't necessarily think black is worse after queen d7 and that the position is just unclear, once we see that b6, that if white plays this line that Daniel has come up with, uh, that white has at least a draw, that's already a sign that maybe b6 is questionable. So I think actually that's probably good enough for us to evaluate that we should have played queen d7. As it turns out here, white is winning. He has exactly one winning continuation, and it's darn difficult. Um, let's uh, let's calculate out the forced win. In the game, Kachishvili did not find it. Um, but yeah. He played a move that was losing, but losing in a very difficult way. All right, so Arnav, you want to share this variation? I think at the end there will be knight takes f4 though, right? And after, yeah, knight fg5, take, take, uh, king g8, knight e6, knight e6, queen g4. After knight takes f4, I think you're running out of pieces to give checkmate with. So the key thing that Daniel had figured out here was that bishop h6 is white's idea now he doesn't necessarily have to do it right now 
but basically what's going to happen is here, I think it's pretty clear you're going to have to sacrifice another piece to break through to Black's King. And a lot of you guys are looking to sacrifice a knight by playing some knight to g5 and then taking back directly. But I actually think it's better to sacrifice the bishop because I don't believe your bishop is a very valuable attacking unit here. It doesn't seem to be threatening anything particularly useful. So the critical idea is to play bishop h6. And do we want to do it here or on the next move? If we do it here, we have to calculate it all the way out to a win. And if we do it on the next move, we have to think about what preparatory move White would want to make first in order to play bishop h uh, h6 next. Because for the moment, what we can see is, uh, is that Black still cannot play knight g6 because of knight g5. We're very confident Black's next move is going to be queen d7. And once he's played queen d7, he's still one more move away to, before he gets to e8 when he really starts to be able to lend the king's support. So it might seem like we have a tempo to spare here, but uh, let's calculate precisely. Uh, Brian, that is correct, but I'm not going to let you answer because you said you'd seen the game before. Um, but let's calculate precisely and try to find the way for it because Kachishvili didn't manage. He played a very tempting and very human move that fails. To a sheesh, that's approximately how the game went. Not quite, but uh, that fails. I don't want to talk about why it fails because we will get to it later on. Okay, so Daniel also, that's approximately how the game went as well. Uh, we will get to that later on. For now, I don't want to tell you why it's wrong because we're going to reach that position and look at it from Black's point of view. Uh, but for now, just accept that it's wrong and try to find a better move. Um, guys, this is not a position where you can just say, oh, queen h4 to maybe play something next. This is very direct. I mean, queen h4, black can go knight g6, and then after knight g5, king g8, you're not in time to take the bishop anymore, and you need to be calculating more precisely than that. So, Evan, that's the right thing. If you have a move I want, but I'm not sure if it'll work, what happens if I do it anyway? Well, you don't want to say, oh, I don't know what happens. Let's go find out. You should calculate and try to figure out for yourself before you hit the clock. But there's um... Austin also keep in mind that after your move, black also gets to move too. So Shish has, I guess. Well, Shish, I don't think that line will, will work. Your rook is hanging at the end of it, right? So the bishop on h6. So Austin, what's your variation? Let's... Yeah, but Austin, there's a. You're right. Black is playing queen d7, but he has a point behind that, and at some point he can, t in your variation, he can take advantage of having played queen d7, and you will regret playing the way you did. Oh, Roger, you need to be calculating much more precisely than that. Keep in mind, if you play something like realistically, if you play anything other than bishop h6, it's almost a hundred percent clear that Black is playing queen d7 next move. So if you say like rookie three for example which is a very sensible looking move uh you have to understand queen d7 is coming next and be calculating from there and i don't really think there's any move other than rookie three here that would help us play bishop h6 next so here i think what you have to realize is you are taking on h6 the question is do you want to do it with rookie three queen d7 included or do you want to do it directly and you have to calculate variations uh, very precisely because one of them wins and one of them loses. And we want to make sure we get this right. Let's start off by finding the one that wins. Before we will go on to what Kachishvili played and why it loses and how to defend. Okay, so basically the thing is um after just rookie... start with the move that you want to play not the move you don't want to play okay so bishop into h6 bishop into h6 knight e to g5 check king h8 knight into e6 knight into e6 and queen g6 but... yeah. this is the second best way white can play and white is much better here um after bishop g7 black's not dead but it's it's really bad for black right um that's already good enough to pull the trigger on bishop takes h6, uh, which does win. Here, though, there is an even stronger move than knight e6. Knight e6 is big advantage, but here there's a move that is absolutely lights out. Uh, anybody else want to give this a try here? But please find the full variation, because there's a key idea here. I thought I was holding this, but there's one very 
there's a fantastic move that I missed at some point. The first move is obvious what it, you should be considering, but the, the question is, do you see Black's defense, and then do you see how to break it? Also, it's occurring to me here that in the event of Hashish's variation with Havisha's variation with this, I'm actually not sure this is that great, because don't I get the queens off now? Or at least relieve a lot of the pressure with this move? Probably still very good for white, but it doesn't seem that convincing anymore. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think white's better here, but... There's a much better move. People are all seeing the, everybody is seeing the first move, but before you can pull the trigger on playing it, you need to figure out what Black's defense is and then how you break it down, because this is really tough. I read your queen g4, no, the queen will hang there. It's not so. I mean, everybody's saying that rookie four or queen h4. Everybody sees that rookie four is like the critical idea. We want to swing this rook to h4, bring another piece into the attack, fair enough. But we need to figure out what is black's big defensive idea after rookie four. Because I had an idea in mind. I saw up to rookie four and I thought I was holding on. Um, yeah, but Havish, that's very cooperative. Like if black ever plays bishop takes g5, he's just going to get busted. But there was a way that I thought I could defend. Roger, rook e4, bishop g8, now rook h4, and you're going to lose. It's too much. Knight h7, now rook h4. This is, guys, find black's defensive idea. This is what's, this is important. A big part of attacking is breaking down, like, good defense. I mean, I was reasonably strong at the time. Um, yes, Ashish, that is correct. Do you want to share with us what the defensive idea is? Oh, um, I said uh, bishop g7, and after like rook h4, king g8. Yeah, uh, use the bishop and hide the king on g8. I had already mentioned this before as something I was thinking about doing in various lines. After rook e, if you want to play rook e4, you have to be ready for bishop g7, followed by king uh, with the idea of king g8. And I believe after rook, g, rook e4, bishop g7, there's only one convincingly winning move, and it's a fantastic move. But let's try to find it, and let's try to find it from here, calculating at this point, as opposed to um, once we've already have it on the board. So, Havish, that is the second best line. And that's I, th I think I was actually confused between this and the last one. The, the last one you gave was, so this is what Hashish gave this with. We go rook e4, bishop g7, knight e6, and queen g6. And this... This was the line I had confused with. The idea of knight e6 and queen g6 is much stronger now than it was on the previous move. And here, I believe this is very good for white, um, but it's not totally over yet, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but there's, all right, I'll give you this position here. Um, I'll give you guys like two to three more minutes before I give you a hint. Actually, Havish, I might even be confused. You might have gotten a wrong one again there, actually. I'm not even sure. But no, it's, it's fine. Um, Arnav is saying, so Arnav, you want to share this line with us? I'm not sure I believe in it, but we can take a look. Oh, no, Mike. Okay. So Arnav's line is check in rook h6, which doesn't look great. Oh, sorry, guys. Stupid thing. Um, yeah, so rook h6 here, but I'm not sure I believe in this. Like, if bishop f5, uh, my pieces are coming back to the defense. And then if knight h4, I can go e6, and my queen is ready to join the defense as well. But yeah, so um, so for example, what Alexander is giving here is queen h4 and then rook f4. But I think this is not great. And the reason is that because we got the move order wrong, now black is able to take with the king on f8. Yeah, I know you guys saw the move. I screwed up. I I didn't mean to. But it's okay. Austin, you want you hope you want something you want to share with us? Let me ask it on mute. Um, let's see. All right. So uh, my idea was instead of playing rook h four, uh, it was to play rook f four. Yeah. Uh, trying to enter on f seven. So I think he has to play king g eight to defend. Uh, they just that's where. I mean, White's point with rook f four. I mean, what knight on f eight? See no mate. Get rid of the knight. This is not he wants to take this knight uh and the point is by doing it in this move order what we can do is after queen d7 because we have not included queen edge four check yet black is unable to take with the king on f8 
he must take with a piece and then queen h4 is mate. Well, if we had started with queen h4 and then gone rook f4 now because black can take with the king on f8, his king will escape. So it's very important to start with rook f4. And here if this, we have rook f8 and knight e6. And if bishop g8, now we have, um, which is the only other really sensible try, uh, we have now occupied the square that black's king was trying to run to. And this is going to be checkmate with knight g5 next. This is very tough. I missed rook f4 during the game. It looks like a lot of you guys did too. But that being the case, we're going to now take this position from Black's point of view, uh, because White played rook e3, which was a mistake. Uh, it's a bad move, and now Black is good to go. Um, but it still is very tough to meet if you're not ready. So, of course, a lot of you guys have discussed this. We all know that we're playing queen d7 next. That should be easy enough. Uh, but here, we're ready to bring this queen around to g6, and White cannot waste any more time. So there follows bishop takes h6. Bishop h6, and now knight fg5. And we see that uh, Kachishvili's point was rather than lift this rook from to e4 and then h4, or in that one case f4, instead he wants to lift it along the g-file. And this is what a line that a lot of you guys gave as well. And a lot of you, I just said, we're not going to go over it right then because we'll get to it later. So here after king h8, queen h4, and king g7, uh, we can see that here... Well, what's white going to play here? It's actually not the most obvious thing. A couple people are saying rook g3. I don't think rook g3 does anything. I mean, with the whole point of bringing the queen to d7, there's another thing is that it overprotects the bishop on e6, which means we can clog this position with the knight on g6 and say queen h5 and take this. We're good to go. Araji is saying knight e6 first and then rook g3, but again, we take with the queen and... Austin says f4 after knight takes e5. This is a nice line actually that I had calculated here. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm pretty sure the computer says absolutely everything wins for black here, but the, there's one really nice move that I, I found. Let's see if anybody wants to try to find it. Yes, Brian. Yes, Ashish. Yes, Arnov. Yeah, everyone's getting this. Bishop g4 is a very nice move. You should always remember how much material your opponent has sacrificed. Um, so here white has given up two pieces. We give one back, we close the g-file, we go knight e2 next, and this game is over. Fair enough. Uh, so this just doesn't work for white. Uh, the queen on d7 lends enough defense that the knight is coming to g6. What's white actually going to play here? To be honest, I just completely missed it in the game. Yeah, Havish, that's right. All right. Okay, we got to calculate really well here because rest assured the slightest mistake we are going to die. Um, but if black calculates this right he wins. This is really tough stuff, but I think you guys can do it. And this is the one phase in the game that I actually played well. Full variations guys, not just a move. And, and falsification, please. If you can bust your own move, then you don't need me to do it for you. How do you describe the feeling when you're riding high in position, think you're cruising to victory, and you play something you don't expect, and you realize you're screwed? I mean, if you realize you're just busted, then, you know, that's a problem. But, like, it's pretty rare that you, like, are so confident in your position, you think you're winning, and then some move comes and you're dead lost. I mean, usually it just means the game has become more complicated and you have to focus again. I remember I had this with Robert Hess and Isle of Man, but it's pretty rare for that to happen. Usually, it's very rare that you're just, like, completely winning and then you miss one thing and you're completely lost. But when that happens, I mean, what can you do? You just have to resign and get on with your day. Um, anyhow, let's focus on the game. We need to find a move here. And a variation. So people are saying, can we do a queen sack? What queen sack are we going to do? I mean, we have to be calculating lines, not, oh, can we do a queen sack? That's a queen sack is not a move. So Radya has an interesting line. You want to share with us? Yeah, I was thinking to go e take f6. Um, um, e take f6. Um, I thought he would play queen take h6. Um, and then like I was thinking king e7. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, I didn't see I, I didn't look at many other moves like I was saying queen g7 and then king d6 and we get away with that well you'll have rook d1 there but this move looks like an issue too 
um, because uh, I mean, once we lose the bishop on e6 here, we're not even up material anymore. But I mean, I mean, maybe we can just run to c7. But I don't know, rook d1. It feels really sketchy here. Um, but I think more to the point is I think this move is the end of the world. I think we're about to lose everything. So I don't think this will work. Other variations. Okay, a lot of people are giving me this line queen d1. Well, giving back some material to lessen the punch of the attack is a very natural thing to do in some of these lines. Keep in mind, when you play queen d1, not all rooks are created equal. You're trading away your queen for like white's one piece that's not attacking you. Like that's not a good sign. So Austin has a good point here. Austin, you want to share this with us? Okay, so let me... This, part of this is elimination. So what do you want, Austin? Uh, well, when you realize that you actually do have to address a threat to the queen, like it's either you take the knight or play knight g6. And uh, taking the knight is, yeah, it's losing. So it must be knight g6 attacking the queen. And uh, if you trade the queens, then that's 100% winning because we're just up two pieces. Uh, if he moves the queen somewhere, well, now I think we can take the knight because the queen won't be attacking the bishop. Unless he plays queen h5, but then queen takes h6 won't be checked. So he has to play knight h5 check, but then after we move the king, he doesn't have any more checks. Okay, so your thought process was totally right, but the calculation was totally wrong. The What we need to do is be looking for elimination here is a good place to start. Uh, we've got to um, eliminate moves from possibility. And so you said, knight, Austin, I think you said uh, we're absolutely, the white is, abs uh, you said, what, what did you say? You said knight g6, knight takes d7, knight takes h4 is 100% winning because we're two pieces up. Are we really two pieces up or are we about to lose a boatload of material? Yeah, we're, we're about to, we're about to lose five points of material here, guys. I mean, that's a lot. So say we go something like knight e6 and then I don't even know what king f7 take and white's going to end up with like a rook and a million pawns for two not very good pieces i think black is dead lost yeah austin was saying king h7 and bishop e3 but there will be knight c6 and this is you're down all the pawns and your white is winning uh so you always have to keep track of material like at this point we're up three points of material we're up two pieces for three pawns we can't just give away five points here and be okay right I mean, that's essentially what just happened after knight g6, knight d7, knight h4, white just took a rook's worth of material. And then all of a sudden you just lose to material force. So we know that we cannot play knight g6. As it turns out after knight g6, I think the computer says queen h5 is even stronger. But, um, but knight d7, knight e6 is very simple, straightforward, and easily enough for, for us to burn the move. Um, what are we going to do? We need a full variation to survive. So Havish is getting closer. Ashish, three pieces for the queen, I don't think it's going to do it. Keep in mind, you're uh, down a million pawns there too. Plus after knight g6, I already told you the computer gave queen h5. But... All right, guys, let's put it this way. One of the best ways to survive, um, one of the best ways to survive an attack is to take the pieces that are attacking you. Nobody seems to want to do that. All right, so let's start with this, EF6, EF6, and now we start with King G6. And Tavish is saying here we have this move Bishop G4, but I don't believe that. I'm not sure I understand. What if I duck my knight back somewhere? Say f3. I think also, I think Havisha's point is that if we can take queen g4, but even this I don't believe in. Like, say we get something like this. White's going to have a queen and three pawns for a rook and two knights. And black's king is wide open and the pawns are three connected passers. I think that this should be bad news for black. I think white's abs I mean white's I think white's absolutely winning here. Let's see what machine says. Yeah. All right. So that's not going to pull it off. Um but yeah, here what are we going to do? Yeah. 
and saying take the knight. Keep getting rid of the attacking pieces. Rook takes g5, and now what? To make the choice correct, there's only two legal moves. One wins and one loses. Let's find the right one. Austin says, take the pawn because it's attacking you. This one is also elimination. Just find which one loses and like directly. And then, uh, so Arnav Gupta, king f6, rook d5 wins. Why? Are you scared of losing your queen for a rook here? I don't think that's the scariest thing that could happen to you right now. You're up, you're up a lot of material. First of all, let's put it this way. If white wants your queen right now, it's it's his. You are not saving your queen in this position. This much is obvious. Uh, you're only, but if he wants your queen, he's going to have to lose his rook for it, and then you will, he will have no attacking pieces left, and you'll have a million pieces for the queen. So don't even worry about your queen. If white wants it, he can have it. Uh, what we need to do is make sure we don't get checkmated. Uh, Daniel Asaria says this line uh, looks terrible for black. I disagree. I don't think this is terrible. I think this is just literally checkmate. Right? This is checkmate in two more moves. Or even one more move. Yeah. So this is mate. Uh, you could go queen f7, but after take and rookie one... It all comes down to material count. And while this position would be winning for black if he kept his bishop, if he loses it, you're definitely not going to be winning here. Um, so, uh, yeah, here what we can do is keep taking the pieces. King takes f6, and there's no good discoveries. I mean, white can certainly go grab the queen if he wants it, but I don't think this is wildly helpful. Like, I mean, Black is totally safe here, and white is nowhere near enough attacking power. We go rookie seven, walk this king around. I mean, at some point here, when we count material, black now has a rook, two knights, and a bishop for three pawns. That last piece being pretty important. Here, there's just too many pieces, and black is winning. All right, so white played rookie one. Uh, at this point, I'm sure he understood he was losing. Um, but let's find a good way to conclude the game. There's... I mean, no, there's more than one winning move, but if you just be a little bit careful. Try to give like an actual variation, not just a move. Or maybe just at least a move with an idea behind it. Brian, that's what I did. It was good enough, but I think that actually there's something even easier, and that wasn't great, honestly, what I played. He, could, he had some weird way. All right, so one guy has already blundered the game away. Two guys have blundered the game away. Be careful. You're three pieces up. You don't want to lose here. Two people have already blundered this game away. Four people have blundered this game away. No, three people have blundered this game away. Sheesh. I think Ashish has also blundered this game away. Austin, what did you say? Um, were you one of those people? Yeah, you blundered the game away. Let's see. Angela, that's five people have blundered the game away. Be careful, guys. You're three pieces up. Just consolidate and you win. Five people have blundered this game away. Just give like an actual idea to consolidate the position. Avish, that's double exclamation mark. Does that mean you want to share with us? Okay, so Avish, let's ask you. Do you want? Yeah, so I thought knight g6 because, first of all, if he makes any discover checks, he can just take the queen. And if he does something like queen g3 or queen x5, we can just play something like queen f7 or bishop f7 and we should be consolidated. Sure. Uh, problem is, key tentative calculation, always examine all checks and captures, and I don't believe you can take the queen at this point. G4, queen h6, rookie 3 mate. And if king g7, queen f6, rookie 6 is gone as well. So, that was one trick that several people fell for. Um, but, uh, 
Several people fell for that, actually. So don't feel like it was just you, Havish. A lot of people made this mistake. Um, yeah, so I think I'll just show how the game went. I played king f7, which is the best move. Just get the king out of check. Again, I will lose my queen, and I just don't care. I mean, if he wants to take it, he can have it. Uh, my king will get to c7, and if he takes the queen, it just doesn't help much. But the real point was after f4. Here, what I think black should do is accept that he's going to lose one piece back, but get, make his king as safe as possible. The computer gave this nice idea to play bishop f5, g4, bishop g6, and after f5 to just use this bishop as a meat shield. Uh, and it's pretty clear that white's totally out of steam here. Uh, what I did also I thought made a lot of sense. After f5, I just ducked my king back to e8. And... Um, after f5 played queen e7, and my thought was, okay, just use this bishop, shut down the, and then bring the king around. This seems pretty easy, but the computer found some really weird resource here for white. I'm, I can't even remember what it was. Like, it was, I think it's, yeah, it's queen g4 only move, threatening rook g7, and in the event of rook takes e6, there's rook f1 only move when I can't move this rook on e6. And somehow rook takes f8 is hard to stop. This is some computer nonsense. Uh, and I think here I have to go king and d7, rook g7. And here um, I still think black should win this. Uh, I'm going to have a rook and two knights for a queen and two pawns. But also the, it's two pawns, not three, which is a big difference. My king will be totally safe on the other side of the board. I do believe black should still win here, but it would have... This could have caused me some trouble, but instead, Kutchishvili just, I mean, that's very computery nonsense in here. Well, finally, my king escaped, and that was that. So, any questions on this game or questions in general? Uh, this one, obviously, there's very little to speak about strategically. This was largely calculation exercises, and as you could see, uh, even very strong players like myself and Kachishvili, I played b6, which was a big mistake, and Kachishvili did not punish me with bishop h6, rook e4. But, you know, um, why is it so intimidating when grandmasters attack you? I did, come on, it's not intimidating. I've been playing this. I haven't I've been playing the Sicilian forever. I haven't been made it in the last like 10 years. Um, I mean, I've lost, but like I, no one's ever like just checkmated me in the Sicilian. I don't know. At some point, you just you, you, your goal is to find the best move. Um, so. Let's see, other questions. How do you practice the least amount of time every day and still improve? I think a big part of it is just making sure that your training is efficient. I mean, I don't even put in that many hours compared to other guys, but um, uh, I mean, I, I think I put in a fair amount, but like you really want to make sure you're focused, that you're sleeping well, eating well, that you put yourself in a quiet room with no electronics and print out the exercises and solve them. And, you know, it's uh, it's. Um, you, if, if you're efficient in solving exercises really well, while you're well focused and well um, and uh, and not distracted by other stuff and not tired, I think that's really good efficient training and that's better. Do you recommend watching the Sam Chanklin method? I'd be a pretty lousy uh, businessman if I said no, right? If your puzzle rush score is in the low 40s and you haven't improved in a while, that is that a bad sign? No, I don't think you should care. Um, so basically, puzzle rush, a huge amount of it is just, can you solve the easy one in half a second or three quarters of a second? And that's just not that really relevant towards classical chess. I mean, for like Blitz or Bullet online, I'm sure, I think puzzle rush, high scores are going to correlate much higher with online blitz or bullet than they will with real chess. So I wouldn't worry much about it. I'll take one more question before we call it a day. How helpful is 30 plus zero? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's pretty similar to 25 plus five, which is what most tiebreak games tend to be uh, rapid like it or whether I like it or not rapid is becoming the future. It's what people are playing often more than classical even. Um, in terms of, I think it's much better than Blitz, but it's not that, I think there, there's really nothing that will repa replace classical chess or like really hard exercise training that to help you become a better classical player. And I'm just so happy that classical chess is finally starting to return. I'm, I will play the Prague Masters next month and that'll be my first tournament in 16 months. It's a long time. 
All right, that'll do it for today. Uh, good job, everybody. And I will see you guys next time.